this is Pulse episode 57 and it's time for some general Blizzard news and for all those Diablo fans out there, some incredibly interesting Diablo news too. We take a look at Blizzard's 20 year anniversary updates, a little bit of information about the rumored Project Titan, some signs that Diablo 3 may well be technically complete, the Ranger class that could have been in Diablo 3, some Facebook like updates and much more. Let's get started. A couple of episodes ago I spoke about the mini site Blizzard launched that was dedicated to celebrating their 20th anniversary. Just yesterday that site was updated and it includes a brand new, extremely long video overviewing the 20 years of their existence via a series of interviews with some of the company's key employees. Did you know that Blizzard Entertainment was originally founded under a completely different name? What is the significance of Jurassic Park in the context of Blizzard Entertainment's art culture? Whatever happened to orcs in space? These and many, many more questions are answered in the full length video they've just released on the site. Clocking in at almost an hour, this video features candid commentary from the people who have spent the last two decades creating the games that helped make Blizzard Entertainment the company it is today. Head on over to the anniversary site and check out Blizzard's retrospective video right now. Next up in the general Blizzard news, we have yet more talk about Blizzard's unannounced game, the mystery MMO that spin the talk of the town for the past few months. VentureBeat.com has posted a new interview with Blizzard COO Paul Sams. There's no mention of Diablo 3 in the conversation, sadly, but Sams does give some interesting insight into free to play versus the Disneyland style full features of World of Warcraft. He even extends that point into some general details about Project Titan, even though he didn't actually acknowledge the project codename for Blizzard's next gen MMO. He does say a few things that we have heard before, that it will be more complimentary than competitive and that while people do have a limited amount of free time that they can dedicate to these type of games, Blizzard do think that people will check the new and the old out. One line I really liked was the following, we think the new one is very compelling and is going to capture a lot of hearts and minds and will be very successful for us. It all does sound like a fairy tale and I can't wait to get some solid information about this most mysterious of games. What else can you find in this interview? You can read about Blizzard's dream team that they have working on this new game, the social or community aspects they hope to include in it, the platforms we may well see it on and much more. A definite great read and well worth checking out for all you Blizzard fans. Let's finally head on over to the Diablo news. In some pretty interesting and in my opinion extremely exciting news, Mike Morham and Frank Pierce recently commented on Diablo 3's progress by saying that the development is technically complete, with only internal testing and feedback left to work on. Now, all this needs to be taken with a grain of salt, as most people often overthink things like this. Firstly, this quote and all the information being talked about here was taken from an interview that the Blizzard head honchos had with the French site Liberation.fr. So that said, the information had to be translated and yes, as you all know, things are often misinterpreted and lost in the translation process. But anyway, even the crudest form of the translated information does give us some hope and what I'd like to call good news. Now first, let's have a look at the question and answer given. Bear in mind, the translation might well be a little bit off. I suppose you do not have a world hysteria scoop to offer the readers of Liberation concerning the official and definitive release date of Diablo 3. Alas no, just to confirm to you that we are full at work for the game to release this year. The development is technically complete. We are in an internal testing and feedback gathering phase. Yes, there are good chances of releasing before the end of 2011, but it is impossible for us, at this time, to guarantee you that. With the help of a few ever keen forum members, they came to the conclusion that Mike and Frank were referring to the core engine of the game that has been completed. Now, the team can apparently focus on the content, the game world, the game rules, and obviously the polish of the game. 
They say that to sum things up, we didn't actually learn anything new here, and Diablo INC Gamers feels this does seem to contradict a lot of what we've been hearing recently from Blizzard themselves, with the male Demon Hunter not being complete, some runes still in rough drafts, and the Demon Hunter's dual resource being more of a concept than a final product. I guess this information and these two quotes mean varying amounts to everyone out there. Sure, it's great that they've once again said that they want to release the game in 2011, but one thing I will say is that if the Diablo 3 team does in fact have the world complete, the story intact, the quests where they need to be, the skills, mostly at least, working as intended, and have no plans to suddenly add another act or class to the game, then, well, that does shine hope on our Diablo 3 beta plight. If all this is true, the game may well be ready for us to test sooner rather than later, as most of the polish, balancing, and all that other goodness would probably be done during the closed beta test. What is also worth keeping in mind is what I spoke about a couple of episodes ago, where during the Quarter 1 Activision Blizzard conference call, Mike Moraham actually mentioned that we might well be hearing more about the Diablo 3 beta during their next call, happening in May. All of this does sound good, and I guess we should all just hold thumbs and hope to hear more, or some clarification on all of this soon. Check the links below and read the full stories, let me know what you think. A fan recently asked a question that has, apparently, come up quite a lot over the past few months on the official Diablo 3 forums, in the discussions of Diablo 3 item hunting. In short, the fan asked the following. With every character getting their own drops, what's to prevent players from standing in the back row and doing very little if they're going to share in the experience and get drops anyway? The example provided was, what if there's one very powerful level 60 character in hell and he has three friends that are following him around and doing relatively little work, because they are in fact stacked up with magic find on their gear. Lots of magic find. Will the three magic find characters be able to leech drops from the powerful level 60? This is assuming they are all level 60 as well. So said fan feels that this mechanic might well be abused, and abused hard. Bashiok replied, and he had quite a bit to say about it, starting off by saying that sure, it could be a problem, but... He claims that the entire magic find system, the way loot drops and all it entails in co-op play will be fairly heavily restricted to specific sources and amounts. He gave the following example, which is completely hypothetical of course. Let's say the only magic find available is from placing a diamond gem in a head slot. It's useful because of the amount that it provides, but maybe other gems in a head slot provide things like bonus XP or bonus gold. Then it's not a choice of power versus magic find and building characters around the system, but a choice between interesting bonuses that'll probably change throughout the career of the character. He then says that's just a thought on how it could work, and that's still under consideration. Blizzard apparently likes the idea of having some way to improve your chances to find magic items, but not as a driving statistic for characters. Lastly, Bashiok just mentions that it is definitely worth noting in this case that enemies in Diablo 3 are more sophisticated. You'll find them targeting characters in your group they perceive as weaker, keeping distance and cooperating to try and kill you and your group. So having one person run ahead to pull everything, let alone solo everything in a multiplayer game, probably isn't going to work out too well. We can also just assume that said monsters will in fact scale, become more powerful with each extra character in the game. So all that said, having one character do most of the work just doesn't seem that likely. If you want to read all about this fan's interactions with Bashiok regarding magic finding groups, you can check the post link below. The guys and girls over at the Diablo database have decided that it's been far too long since their last giveaway, and oh, does that mean good things for us. So, to slake our thirst, for a little while at least, they just wanted to give us a little reward for being as patient as we are. At the same time, though, this will help us stay even more up to date with all the Diablo 3 happenings out there right now. So, what is this reward, you ask? Yes, you Diablo guys might not appreciate this quite as much as the WoW guys out there. Sorry. They're giving away all five the World of Warcraft digital pets to three lucky winners. All you have to do to enter is like the Diablo fan page on Facebook and follow D3DB on Twitter. But wait, that's not all. One incredibly lucky winner will also receive the highly sought after, extremely rare and nearly impossible to obtain Tyriel's Hilt pet code. This pet code was given for attending the 2008 Worldwide Invitational in Paris and awards a feat of strength in-game along with the amazingly cool pet. So yes, that is in fact why this is Diablo related news. 
For all you Blizzard fans out there, this is a must enter and you can find the full details and links to enter below. Good luck. They let us know that they will randomly select 3 winners on March the 15th, 2011. Winners will be contacted via their Facebook or Twitter accounts to confirm ownership and email the pet codes afterwards. Rest assured your Facebook and Twitter profile pages will not ever be published publicly for this contest. Lastly, the pet codes are good for European and North American players only. More delicious fan art. Yes, and there is indeed quite a load of it to look at today. First up, we have Diablo INC Gamers Fan Art Watch number 78. This post has two really cool pieces, one of a female monk that looks to have taken more than a bit of inspiration from the famous monk cosplayer Christina Estrada, and secondly a really great speed painting of an Amazon that seems to have just been in a bit of a scrap. In Fan Art Watch 79 we get a look at a few pieces that were actually added to the official Blizzard gallery, three incredibly detailed barbarians and the butcher, which is one of my personal favourites as it brings back a few pretty vivid memories, can be found below. In some semi-related news, it seems like that limited edition Diablo 3 Barbarian Overthrown statue that was all the rage a while back is going on sale once more over at Sideshow Toys. So if any of you were looking to get your hands on that $300 masterpiece, now's your chance. In what I see as an amazing find and an even more amazing set of images, here are a few early concepts of the Ranger, which eventually led to the Demon Hunter class in Diablo 3. Yes, all those guesses from a couple of months back that thought the 5th class would in fact be a ranger were right. Sort of. I have to say it's really great seeing these early concepts of how the class could have looked compared to what it looks like now. These were all taken from the blog of Froilin Gardner, a fantasy artist who worked for Blizzard Entertainment for quite a few years a while back. He contributed a lot of Diablo 3 concept art as well as creating a great deal of World of Warcraft stuff too. He has since parted ways with Blizzard Entertainment and has been posting tons of cool artwork on his blog. He lets us know that he is happy with the way the Demon Hunter turned out and that he absolutely can't wait to play the class, saying that in his opinion it's the closest thing to a gothic fantasy styled character in the current Diablo 3 hero lineup. These six images are most definitely worth looking at, along with all the other amazingly well done pieces on his blog. You can find the link below. Bashiok recently got involved in a thread about skill trees and tiers in Diablo 3 and provided a nice explanation of how they work and why they're set up the way they are. He starts off by saying that skills are tiered out for progression. They serve not only as a reward when you level up, but also to ensure that Blizzard is not dumping the entire game on a new player. Early tier skills tend to be cheap or free to cost and have fairly straightforward mechanics and uses, like dealing damage to enemies. As the tiers progress, though, more complex systems are introduced. Avoidance, mobility, maybe some skills that cost a little more or require a bit more finesse to pull off well. Then the end of the tier skills are usually the biggest, most expensive and visually impressive. The tiers do start out simply and progress towards bigger goals and cooler spells, as they should. He says that Blizzard can also design and tune the beginning of the game with the skills available in mind, which really helps to ensure that those first few hours aren't frustrating. I guess while all of that does make sense, and none of it is really anything new, it's still good to hear the reasoning behind them setting it up the way they do. Bashiok then carries on by saying that while he's sure there'll be builds that take all the end tier skills, people will still need to pick skills throughout the tree to create a solid character, and they're designing the skills to ensure that they continue to be as viable as possible regardless of your character level. Some first and second tier skills will scale really well and will most likely be the bread and butter skills for a number of builds. Bashiok concluded this all by giving us a bit of repeat information. The leveling progression is designed so that you'd have all your skill tiers unlocked before you finish normal. I guess this is the kind of information that players interested in the leveling process would really want to hear. You can have a look at the full quote and other information included below. And yes, there are even a few images of the previously revealed trait and skill trees, courtesy of Diablo INC Gamers. The ever entertaining Diablo Facebook like campaign has just yielded what is in my opinion some of the best artwork thus far. The Diablo Facebook page hit and passed the 625,000 mark a day or two ago and we've been gifted with a brand new piece of concept art and another screenshot. The screenshot was previously released via the BlizzCon 2010 Diablo 3 press kit but it is still worth a look for those who haven't seen it yet. 
The good part of this update though is definitely the amazing piece of the Tristram Cathedral and much of New Tristram laid out in the distance. By far one of my favourite pieces of concept art to date and I absolutely can't wait for more. Check both of these images out below in full size and if you haven't already head on over to the Diablo 3 Facebook page and give it a like. Below is also a link to Diablo INC Gamer's post of this where a few questions are answered about this exciting new artwork. Check that out too if you're interested. Now let's head on over to the Diablo 3 Smalls. In this week's Smalls you can take a look at forum watch number 64 over at Diablo INC Gamers titled Y'all Wanna Debate. There's a poll up asking whether you'll play Hardcore Diablo 3. You can also check out the Diablo 3 weekly wallpaper post number 84. Diablo with Light and Darkness. The Dark Library number 32 is also up at Diablo INC Gamers. Diablo Fans has an article up taking another look at Blizzard's anti-modding stance. Blizzard has a poll running about Diablo 2 Season 7. And if you want a slightly different perspective on the recent news, you can check out Force Diablo 3's Purgatory Episode 5. Next up, let's head on over to the questions and answers. In-game mic chat support? Will there be a special edition game with some extras included? Thank you for your time. Voice chat is a base feature of the new Battle.net platform, so it's likely. We've not announced a collector's edition. Will gems give the same bonuses they did in Diablo 2? No, they're all pretty much different. Elemental damage comes from enchantments now, for instance. No zoom? Then why is there zoom in the first gameplay trailer? We did have a zoom function back in 2008. It was removed shortly after. Has allowing 8 or 10 skills instead of 7 been seriously considered? 7 just seems so few to me. Of course, everything is seriously considered. Can runes be swapped whenever or do you need an artisan to equip swap out runes? Restrictions are likely for when where you can change them. Since you reworked stats to benefit all classes, will gems be treated in the same manner? Because Diablo 2 gems in weapons didn't benefit casters. There is a caster gem for weapons, potentially two depending on your build. Hi, I've noticed two screenshots, on one of them the barbarian looks different. In the one he got war paint and in the other he doesn't. Is this a new feature that allows you to add war paint and or tattoos to your character? Or has the skin of his model been changed? Personally I like the war paint much more. The barbarian will see a throwback to the classic blue war paint when equipping a specific gear set. Is it something similar to say where an elder is on a druid and the other class specific sets for the other classes? No, it's just an effect from the chest piece of one tier set. Class specific items are still planned, but this would not be what it is, no. Sadly, that is once again all the Diablo 3 news I have for you this week. Keep checking back here soon for more, and if you want to see a text version of all this news, check the links below. As usual, thanks for watching, liking the video, favoriting it, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing. Most importantly though, happy technically complete Diablo 3.